Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello learners, welcome to session 10 of our training and development course. Today we will delve into the realms of exploring emerging trends in the workplace learning. We will talk about adaptation to the digital area, oh, sorry, adapting to the digital era in terms of artificial intelligence, virtual reality and other innovations and we will discuss several strategies for staying ahead in the evolving field of training and development. Now, let us begin without any further ado. So, workplace learning refers to the process by which individuals acquire, develop and enhance the knowledge, skills, competencies necessary to perform their jobs effectively. It encompasses both formal and informal learning experiences that can take place within the workplace including training programs, on the job training, mentoring, coaching and knowledge sharing among colleagues. So, in modern organizations workplace learning tools and workplace learning holds significant importance due to several factors. Now, what are these, these factors? We will just try to work around it. So, the very first factor is continuous change and innovation. According to the World Health, uh, World Economic Forum, it is estimated that by the 2025, automation and artificial intelligence could displace 85 million jobs, but create 70, 97 million jobs emphasizing the need for continuous learning and upskilling. So, it is a very important number to understand that if it is displacing, it is if AI is going to displace 85 million jobs, it will be creating 97 million jobs. So, this was uh, given by World Economic Forum in a report called the Future of Jobs Report 2020. A study by McKinsey found that 94 percent of business leaders surveyed expect digital transformation efforts to accelerate in the next three years, highlighting the importance of adapting to technological advancement through workplace learning. Next important factor is talent development and retention. Research by LinkedIn revealed that 94 percent of employees would stay at a company longer if it invested in their career development. So, there is a likelihood of employees um, staying with the organization for long if the organization is taking care of their learning opportunities and the organization is spending in the career development of the employees. There was another report by Gallup which found that companies with highly engaged workforces outperform their peers by 147 percent in earnings per share, demonstrating the link between employee engagement, learning opportunity and retention. So, this was the report which stated that uh, highly engaged workforce outperform their peers by concrete 147 percent in earnings per share. That is about adapting to complex challenges. Deloitte's Global Human Capital Trends report found that 94 percent of organizations surveyed said that they expect their employees to pick up new skills on the job, highlighting the importance of on the job learning in addressing complex challenges. Another report by PwC revealed that 90 uh, 79 percent of the CEOs are concerned about the availability of key skills within the organization, underscoring the need for continuous learning to address the skill gap 
and challenges. So, the big concerns like PwC, they are really concerned about the availability of key skills in the organization and they are continuously thinking on the lines of continuous learning and development opportunities for their employees. Because it is believed that if the skill gap is you know lessened, then it can definitely prove to be very, very productive for the organizational success. Then another factor in this context is enhanced performance and productivity. So, well trained and skilled employees are better equipped to perform, perform their duties more effectively and efficiently, leading to improved productivity and performance outcomes for the organization as a whole. There was this research conducted in this context by Association for Talent Development and it found that companies offer comprehensive training program have 218 percent higher income per employee than those with less comprehensive training. There is another report by IBM which found that every dollar invested in online learning results in 30 dollar in productivity gains indicating that significant return on investment associated with workplace learning initiatives. So, it is found that if organization is continuously trying its level best to invest in learning environment at the organization and is continuously working towards continuous learning and development initiatives in the organization, then it is able to reap out a lot of benefits in terms of increased productivity and increased profitability also to a large extent. So, therefore, it becomes evident that workplace, in workplace learning initiatives should be promoted. Next is about agility and resilience. By promoting a culture of continuous learning and adaptability, organizations can become more agile and resilient in face of uncertainty and change. So, employees who are accustomed to training are evolving and evolving are better prepared to handle unexpected disruptions and seize new opportunity as and when they arise. So, according to a survey by Mercer, 97 percent of organizations believe that becoming more agile is critical to their success, highlighting the importance of agility in navigating uncertainties and disruptions. A report by McKinsey found that companies with a stronger learning culture are 30 percent more likely to be the market leaders in their industries, emphasizing the correlational link between learning agility and organizational resilience. So, those organizations which are agile in nature are likely to be more resilient and agility definitely comes as a consequence of learning. So, if you have workplace uh, environment which is full of learning and development opportunities for the individuals, the agility is likely to happen there and as a consequence of agility, the resilience also happens or the employees become more resilient and thereby the organizations also become more resilient. So, this was about uh, the various uh, aspects related to workplace, uh, workplace learning holding significant importance due to several factors. Now, it is important for us to you know understand some important things related to emerging technologies, which are shaping training and development. So, when we talk about uh, emerging technologies, there are several emerging technologies that are picking up and they are shaping the training and development. For example, we have artificial intelligence, we have virtual reality, we have augmented reality and machine learning. So, we are going to discuss in detail about each one of the aspects and how these emerging technologies are shaping the training and development. Let us start with the first aspect artificial intelligence. So, what is artificial intelligence? It refers to the simulation of human intelligence processes by machines, particularly computer systems. So, in the context of training and development, AI is revolutionizing the way organizations deliver personalized learning experiences. So, AI per, you know AI powered learning uh, platforms are there which analyze learners behavior, 
it even uh, you know uh, let people know about the preferences of the behavior you know preferences of the people because uh, these AI systems are capable of uh, using a lot of intelligence and uh, they are intelligent enough to uh, gauge into the various analytics and all. So, they are able to understand the uh, behavior of the individuals, they are able to understand the preferences of people and also they are able to get the performance data to tailor the training content and recommendation to their individual needs. These days we have a lot of, you must have used a lot of uh, mechanisms wherein there are chatbots like things. So, chatbots and virtual assistants powered by artificial intelligence provide instant support and guidance to the learners. So, they are continuously ask, answering their questions if the trainees have some doubts somewhere or the other, they may ask and their doubts are resolved. It also helps them in providing feedback. It provides them with instant support and guidance to learners, answering the questions and offering assistance in real time. So, this is one of the salient features of chatbots and uh, the kind of uh, instant answers people are able to get or the kind of feedback which people are able to get or the trainees are able to get is something phenomenal. Then we have AI driven data analytics which enables the organization to track and measure the effectiveness of the training program, identify the areas of improvement and make data driven decisions to optimize the learning outcomes. What does it mean? It means that we have some such systems into place which are able to help us in understanding the effectiveness of the training program. So, we can gain an insight into very real time progress of the training program very real time effectiveness assessment of the training program and also one can identify the potential areas of improvement for the training program and obviously, we can make some data driven decisions to optimize the learning outcomes. So, this is about artificial intelligence. So, the mechanism of artificial intelligence uh, in uh, uh, shaping the training and development is picking up these days and it is uh, gaining traction in today's time. Uh, the example of AI powered chatbots used by IBM Watson can be you know uh, considered here. So, IBM Watson's AI powered chatbots are being used by the organizations like HNR Block to provide personalized tax training to the employees. So, the chatbots simulate real life scenarios they are meant for answering the questions and they provide instant feedback enhancing the efficiency and effectiveness of training. So, if the organizations incorporate some element of artificial intelligence enabled chatbots in their training mechanisms then certainly they are able to benefit a lot out of it. So, according to IBM, HNR Block reported a 95 percent satisfaction rate among the employees who use the AI powered chatbots for training and the company saw 10 percent increase in employee performance on tax related assessments. So, how wonderful it is, it is a one time investment and uh, definitely the organization can be benefited in multiple ways by means of it. And uh, next is virtual reality and augmented reality. So, what is, what is virtual reality? Uh, virtual reality enables the learners to immerse themselves in simulated environments such as uh, virtual laboratories, job simulations, interactive training sessions where they can practice skills and receive immediate feedback in a risk free setting. Now, let me just apprise you about this. So, uh, if the organization wants to uh, create some kind of experience for the people in terms of giving them an exposure to online uh, you know uh, or virtual laboratories or job simulations. So, this can be an excellent way where people can, ex can be made to execute the projects in real time basis on virtual platforms. So, it always gives them a sense of uh, very interactive training scenarios where they can practice the skills and receive immediate feedback in a risk free setting. Then we have augmented reality, it overlays digital information onto the physical environment. 
allowing the learners to interact with the virtual element in real time. For example, art augmented reality can be used to provide on the job training by overlaying the instructional guides or information onto the machineries and equipments. So, there are excellent ways to facilitate collaborative learning experiences. It makes learning fun allowing remote teams to engage in virtual training sessions or simulations together. So, many organizations even use these platforms not only for the purpose of learning they use it, they use it even for the purpose of recruitment of the people. So, th these can be wonderful ways of keeping people at work and also to train them well regardless of their geographical location. Uh, example in context of VR technology could be Walmart utilizes VR technology to train its employees in customer service. So, there are a lot of people who are to be trained on customer service. So, what Walmart does is it tries to utilize VR that is virtual reality to train its employees in customer service, management and compliance procedures also. Through the various simulations which they have prepared especially with respect to virtual reality, employees can practice handling real world scenarios such as managing crowds during Black Friday sales or uh, responding to emergency in a safe and a very controlled environment. So, people get to know about all these things, people would uh, see such things happening and uh, they can just uh, have a look at the virtual reality uh, thing and they can they can be made to operate in a virtual setting where they are exposed to some real life kind of scenarios and it definitely helps them train them better to you know to handle any kind of issues in future so walmart reported a 70% increase in employee confidence after using vr training modules leading to improved customer satisfaction scores. Additionally, the company saw a 10 to 15 percent increase in the employee retention rate also among VR trained employees compared to those who underwent traditional training methods. So, this is an excellent way of demonstrating the uh, training to the people and the results are also very, very evident as we can see that the company saw 10 to 15 percent increase in employee retention rate as a consequence of the VR training that was given to the individuals. So, it itself is uh, evident of the fact that people feel more engaged, they feel more uh, immersed in the training experience which they get out of the VR enabled training strategies and definitely uh, as against the traditional training methods which are used. Then next is machine learning. So, when we talk about machine learning, machine learning is also a very, very important uh, thing which is gaining traction today. So, it is believed to be making phenomenal changes and uh, you know bringing about transformative changes in the business landscape. So, machine learning algorithms analyze vast amount of training data to identify the patterns. So, lot of pattern identification can be done. And it is a by means of pattern identification a lot of insights can be derived that inform the decision and uh, that inform the design and delivery of personalized learning experiences. So, we have recommendation systems which are again powered by machine learning mechanisms and they help us in recommending and suggesting relevant learning courses, relevant learning uh, material or module based on the learners preferences based on the past behavior of the individuals and performance data. So, a lot of predictions can be done here. So, machine learning is one such mechanism which can help us in analyzing the trends and performing something called as predictive analytics, wherein on the basis of the past data. efforts are made to predict the future. 
So, machine learning also enables adaptive assessments that dynamically adjust the difficulty level and content of quizzes or assessments based on learners proficiency levels, ensuring a tailored learning experience for each individual. So, you can really uh, you know machine learning is at times very very suggestive of the courses which, which can be taken up by an individual based on the past preferences of the uh, people, based on the past trends, based on the uh, behaviors of the people who have been using certain tests. Uh, certain uh, courses. So, this can be of great relevance to many of the uh, organizations for the training purpose. Example in this context could be Amazon employing machine learning algorithms. So, most of the prominent organizations, most of the progressive organizations, they are using all these mechanisms today to personalize the training content for its warehouse employees. So, Amazon is the organization which is using the uh, machine learning mechanisms, learning algorithms to personalize the training content for its warehouse employees. So, these algorithms analyze the performance data of the employees, their learning preferences, their skill gaps to recommend the relevant training modules and resources tailored to each individual. According to Amazon, employees who participated in personalized machine learning driven uh, you know training programs showed an improvement of 20 percent in productivity compared to those who received generic training materials. Additionally, the company observed a 25 percent reduction in training time and 30 percent decrease in errors among, among employees who underwent personalized training. So, definitely these things create a lot of difference. Now, we move to the potential benefits associated with adopting emerging technologies. Multiple benefits, whole host of benefits are uh, there pertaining to adopting emerging technologies. Many of the organizations are integrating technology in their ongoing systems these days and uh, these emerging technologies are also gaining momentum and therefore, uh, we would just be highlighting some of the important challenges as well as ch uh, potential benefits of adopting emerging technologies. So, let us uh, get started with the uh, potential benefits of adopting emerging technologies first. So, the very first thing in this regard is enhanced learning experience. Emerging technologies like artificial intelligence, virtual reality, then data driven decision making, machine learning they have the potential to transform the traditional training methods into immersive, more interactive, more personalized learning experiences. So, learners can engage with the content in a more dynamic and engaging manner and thereby leading to improved knowledge retention better productivity at work and enhanced performance also. So, certainly these uh, technologies prove to be very, very productive for the organization and thereby enhance the entire learning experience of the individuals. Uh, next in line is increased efficiency and productivity. So, when we talk about enhanced increased efficiency and productivity, definitely adopting emerging technologies can streamline the training processes. So, training processes can be streamlined, then there can be automation of tasks which are of repetitive nature and it is about providing real real time feedback to the people. So, it is about giving real time feedback to the people. Right. So, this way uh, a lot of efficiency and productivity uh, you know can be raised as employees 
uh, spend less time on training and more time on their core job responsibilities. Uh, it can eventually lead to lot of cost savings also. So, when you talk about cost savings, initial investments may be very very high, but once the investment is made you do not have to put a lot towards its maintenance, right. So, they have the potential to reduce the long term training cost. So, lot of reduction can be brought about in the long term training cost uh, if we are putting in good amount of efforts on you know if we are putting initial investment on uh, these emerging technologies then in the long run we may be able to recover the costs which were born for this. Then we have global accessibility anybody can access it at, a, at any point of time you know when you talk about uh, you know cost savings. Uh, cost saving can also happen because uh, then you do not have to spend the same amount of money on conducting those live sessions to people if they are finding the AR, VR enabled AI, mechan AI enabled mecha mechanisms to be more interesting. So, they can eliminate the need for physical training facilities, travel expenses, material cost associated with it, a lot of logistical cost associated with it. So, a lot of such costs can be reduced to a large extent. Next is global accessibility. So, global accessibility is an important aspect. Emerging technologies enable organizations to deliver training to geographically dispersed workforce. The boundaries are blurred because of it. With online learning platforms, employees can access training material from anywhere at their own convenience, they are all self directed learning, they can do it at their own pace also. So, in many ways uh, the emerging technologies are proving to be boon to many of the trainees and definitely they can uh, use the training material at any point of time because it is very handy also. Next is data driven insights. So, by means of uh, some of the emerging technologies like machine learning and all, what happens is we are able to better catch hold of the data that we have and we are able to make more informed decisions because, the, because of the analysis of the various past trends that we have in hand. So, definitely the data driven insights can be gained by means of emerging technologies which helps us in predicting many things better and definitely we are able to take more informed decisions at any point of time by using such technologies. So, apart from these uh, things that we just dealt with regarding the potential benefits of adopting emerging technology, let us have a look at some of the potential challenges of adopting emerging technologies. Now, what are the various challenges associated with uh, these kinds of technologies? So, when we talk about potential challenges associated with the, these technologies, the first challenge is initial investment. A lot of money goes in adopting these technologies and also in the implementation cost that has to be borne as a result of it. So, adopting emerging technologies required significant upfront investment and where is the investment required? It is required in the softwares, in trainings, in infrastructure etcetera. So, organization may face challenges in securing the necessary funding and resources to implement these technologies effectively. Then is technological complexity. Emerging technologies are usually complex in nature and require some because of the you know lot of uh, complexity involved in the mechanism, a lot of uh, specialized skill skills are required. 
to implement and manage. So, organizations may encounter challenges in finding skilled professional capable of developing, deploying and maintaining these technologies. Now, it is about resistance to change. At several instances, it is seen that employees are often resistant to change. They are resistant to change. They would, uh, you know, they would resist to adopt the new technologies and it is because of several reasons, because they fear job displacement. There is always a fear of the unknown. They have uh, this fear of job displacement, fear of unknown, then they are not familiar with, there is unfamiliarity with the new tools. And they also have some kind of concerns over their privacy. They have a lot of concerns over their privacy and security matters. So, this is why a lot of resistance comes from the side of employees and trainees at times. So, this can again prove to be a big challenge because overcoming resistance to change and fostering a culture of innovation within the organization can be a significant challenge in this regard. Then is about integration of technology with already existing systems. So, at times integration of these technologies with existing systems, processes, workflows can be highly challenging, especially in large organizations with complex IT infrastructures. So, compatibility issues might come, data silos might happen, uh, interoperability concerns may arise during the integration process. So, it is something that has to be handled very, very carefully, otherwise it can uh, really be very counterproductive for the success of the organization. Now, despite these challenges, there are several uh, benefits which we just talked about. So, by uh, addressing these challenges proactively, and leveraging the transformative power of emerging technologies. Organizations can be benefited like anything and they can unlock new opportunities for innovation, for growth and success in the long run in the digital age. So, this was about potential challenges and benefits. Moving on to the next segment understanding the impact of digital era on training and development. So, it involves recognizing how advancements in technology have reshaped the way individuals learn and develop skills in the modern workplaces. So, I am just pro providing you with a breakdown of various uh, components here. The very first is accessibility and flexibility. This is a big boon, I must say. The digital era has truly democratized access to learning, making it easier for the individuals to engage in training and development at their own pace, regardless of their location or regardless of their schedule. Online courses, webinars, digital learning platforms, they offer lot of flexibility to their employees, allowing learners to access content at any place at their own convenience in a self-paced learning mode. Then is personalization. Digital technologies enable personalized learning experiences tailored to individual needs and preferences. So, adaptive learning algorithms, recommendation system which we just talked about in context of machine learning and artificial intelligence, more of data driven insights to help us gauge into uh, a better decision or to take better decisions, helping uh, the organizations to customize the learning paths for the employees based on their preferences, based on uh, their, their uh, based on a number of factors that have a bearing on them and uh, personalizing the content for them 
and their assessments based on learners, skill levels, style, learning styles and performance data can be really fruitful for the organizations. Then it's about engagement and interactivity. So, digital tools and platforms offer numerous interactive and engaging learning experiences. There are few features of multimedia content, there are simulations, there are gamifications, there are social learning functionalities, you know, uh, the challenges which are associated with the mechanisms which are being used for engagement and interactivity, like for example, badges are given to the people, then milestone achievement uh, is there, then there is something called as um, giving them adequate uh, amount of freebies at the time when they achieve some, some uh, goal. Uh, providing them with the leaderboards, etc. You know, these things can really prove to be important as well as very, very productive for the organization's training program. And uh, there are several features such as social learning functionalities. So, these immersive experiences enhance learners' engagement, motivation, and knowledge retention also. Next is continuous learning culture. So, the digital era promotes a culture of continuous learning, where learning becomes a lifelong pursuit rather than a one time event. So, for example, micro learning in just, just in time resources, on demand access of knowledge, empower individuals to acquire new skills and information as needed to stay relevant in the rapidly changing world. Then we have remote and distributed workforce. With the rise of remote work and distributed teams, digital technologies play a crucial role in training and development, who are geographically dispersed, which is not as otherwise possible in case of the physical trainings which are imparted to the people. So, in case of emerging technology being brightly put into place, we can definitely make use of these, uh, you know, put into place, we can definitely cater to more of remote and distributed workforce and all of them can uh, attain the same level of expertise by means of training. Good learning happens and good transfer of training also happens. Then virtual classrooms, video conferences, then team collaborations, all these things are there which can really help a lot. Then we have data driven decision making. So, digital technologies generate a vast amount of data that can be analyzed to gain insight into the learning behaviors, patterns, preferences and outcomes. So, organizations can use these data analytics to measure the effectiveness of the training program. Identify areas of improvement, you know for example, just at a click of mouse you can get to know about the training effectiveness just by feeding the data. I mean real time assessments of people can happen, the training reaction can be sensed without putting in more of efforts. So, definitely the initial investment is high, but in the long run you are able to make up for that initial investment also, because of the kind of uh, benefits it bestows. Now, this was about uh, the various things. So, overall understanding the impact of digital era on training and development practices involves embracing the technological innovations to create flexible, personalized and engaging learning experiences to thrive in today's digital workplace. Now, by means of this example or by means of this case study, we would like to highlight how digital transformation in training and development happens at XYZ Corporation. So, let us talk about this organization XYZ Corporation. It is a global technology company which is recognized, which recognized the need to adapt its training and development practices to the digital era to remain competitive and effectively upskill its workforce. So, by embracing the digital transformation, XYZ aimed to enhance the learning experiences, improved employee engagement and foster a culture of continuous learning. 
Now, what are the challenges associated with this organization? This organization faced several challenges in its traditional training and development programs and practices which it was following. Number one, limited accessibility. It used to be more into traditional classroom based training, which were an inaccessible to it had a huge uh, you know workforce, which was geographically dispersed. So, this organization was finding it very difficult to make the programs, the physical training programs or traditional classroom learning programs accessible to remote employees and those working in different time zones. Second, there was lack of personalization. So, one size fits all training approach did not cater to the individual learning needs and preferences here, resulting in low level of engagement and intention rate. So, there was no personalized approach which, which was being taken care of. Therefore, when the, when the organization failed to take care of the learning styles and preferences of people and it could not cater to the requirements of people in a very personalized way, it definitely resulted in the lower level of engagement among individuals and definitely the retention rates of the individuals was also very, very low. Then if inefficient training delivery was the third thing which it faced. So, there were manual uh, processes, outdated technologies, you know, all these things hindered the delivery and management of training programs. Since the practices which were being followed by this organization were very, very traditional and very, very conventional in their approach. So, definitely uh, the training delivery could not happen in the manner it should actually be. So, it was leading to more of inefficiencies at the workplace and also the delays. Then there was also difficulty in measuring the impact. So, limited data analytics cap capabilities were there. So, it was making it very challenging to measure the effectiveness. The simple descriptive nature of uh, data analytics was not actually working here. And of course, the learners track of progress was also not being kept accurately because physically to maintain the data for so many employees was a daunting task for the organization also. Now, the solution to address these challenges as a solution to address these challenges at XYZ corporation they implemented a very comprehensive digital transformation strategy. They decided to go for digital transformation strategy for its training and development efforts. Now, what did they do? They decided to go for learning management systems. So, these learning management systems, they invested in a modern LMS platform that provided a very centralized hub for hosting, delivery and tracking the training content. They hosted, they delivered and they, I mean, uh, they, they maintained a centralized hub for hosting, delivering and uh, tracking training content. So, LMS feature which was offered to the people offered some important features such as mobile compatibility, self-paced learning and personalized learning paths also. So, what is LMS? LMS is normally a platform in which uh, an individual is able to take the content and is able to develop, I mean is able to develop his skills by uh, learning the content. He is able to keep a, tra a track of the progress also and also the self paced learning also happens. So, there was a lot of mobile compatibility also which means the app was very much accessible on your mobile on their mobiles as well. So, it gave them a lot of flexibility to do it at their own terms and at their own pace also. So, this was again a very, very interesting system uh, where an initial, initial investment was put towards developing and adopting a learning management system to effectively transfer the training to the individuals. There is integration of virtual classroom technology to facilitate remote learning and collaboration XYZ integrated virtual classroom technology into its training program. So, virtual classrooms enabled interactive live sessions, 
some breakout sessions also, group discussions, real time engagement among the participants regardless of their geographical locations. So, virtual classrooms uh, were there which enabled interactive live sessions, group discussions and real time engagement among the participants. Now, implementation of personalized learning solutions which meant leveraging AI driven recommendations, engines and adaptive learning algorithms. XYZ developed personalized learning solutions that tailored training content and activities of the individual learner needs. So, how does it happen? They try to track the progress of an individual and they, are tra try, they try to identify the various areas that need attention or you may say they are able to identify the is issues which are of great concern and after identifying those uh, concerns or issues which are of great concern, they would uh, develop you know the personalized learning solutions catering to the requirement of the needs of an individual learner. So, learners receive targeted recommendation for courses, modules, resources based on their skills, their interests and learning goals. So, this was about implementation of personalized learning solution. And last but not the least is the utilization of data analytics. They utilize the data analytics and by utilizing data analytics tools to track the learners progress, they were able to measure the learning outcome and assess the effectiveness of the training initiatives which were imparted to the individuals. And by carefully analyzing the learners engagement metrics, so they, they use a lot of metrics when it comes to data driven insight it comes in the form of different aspects of metrics. So, they take, took into consideration the learner engagement metrics, the completion rate of the course which would mean how many of them actually completed the course and assessment scores. Then X, Y, Z by means of all these things were able to gain an insight into the areas of improvement and optimization of the training programs. Now, we move to the results. So, organization identified few problems starting with the very traditional methods which were into practice by the organization. Then they decided to integrate a technology with their already existing systems and especially the emerging technologies wherein they started making use of n number of uh, interventions such as AI, machine learning, data analytics, so on and so forth and the results were phenomenal as a consequence to it. So, the implementation of digital transformation initiatives in training and development yielded significant results for this organization. Now, what are they? The very first is increased accessibility. So, remote and distributed employees gained access to high quality training content and resources, thereby leading to improved learning experiences and engagement level. So, this was one thing which was witnessed by the organization and they found that there was a lot of improvement in terms of learning experiences and the engagement levels also. So, people were more engaged in the uh, learning uh, methods, they were more engaged in the training programs. Their completion rate also increased like anything, their uh, you know improved uh, learning outcomes or learning experiences were there and th they were very very, very uh, evident from the data driven insights that were gathered using data analytics mechanisms. Then is enhanced personalization. So, learners benefited from personalized learning path and recommendation resulted in resulting in higher level of satisfaction and improved knowledge retention. So, a lot of personalization happened, they were benefited from the personalized training methods which were uh, communicated to them and uh, personalized learning paths and recommendations which were made and it definitely led to the higher satisfaction rate among them. Their efficiency also increased, digital tools and platforms streamlined the entire training delivery mechanisms processes and reduce the administrative burdens from the people and increase the training program efficiency. Then data driven 
decision making was uh, something that enabled XYZ to make informed decisions. They were able to optimize the training content and allocate the resources effectively to maximize the learning outcome. And this promoted the culture of continuous learning leading to higher employee morale, increased motivation and a more skilled and adaptable workforce. So, now we will be discussing a few strategies for integrating the digital tools and platforms into the training program. The very first being need assessment and goal setting selection of appropriate tools and platforms, customization and personalization, integration with existing training programs, engagement and interactivity, assessment and feedback, continuous improvement and evaluation. So, in context of importance of personalized learning experience and adaptive learning technologies to address the diverse learning needs. I would like to quote the example of Khan Academy. It is an online learning platform which offers personalized learning experiences in several subjects such as math, science, humanities. So, learners receive customized recommendations for lessons and uh, practice exercises based on their performance and progress. Then in context of increasing engagement and motivation, example could be Duolingo, the language learning app. It uses adaptive learning algorithms to personalize the learning experience for people. So, people are able to get the learners are able to get and receive the immediate feedback and encouragement as they progress through their different levels. In context of optimizing the learning outcomes, the example could be Smart Sparrow, an adaptive learning platform which enables educators to create personalized learning experience that adopt that adapt to each learner's needs and learning styles. Then about promoting lifelong learning, LinkedIn learning offers personalized course recommendations and learning paths based on learners career goals, skills and interests. So, learners can access a vast library of online courses, tutorials and resources to develop new skills and advance their career. So, to identify the key competencies and skills needed for future training and development professionals, we have uh, to think on the lines of these aspects, we have to understand the theories and principles, we have to do data analysis, we have to talk about the communication facilitation skills, adaptability and flexibility. Now, what are the strategies that can help us in staying updated on emerging trends? Number one being networking. Then we have attending the conferences, providing ample opportunities for people to go for more of online courses, then uh, reading industry publications and blogs also, then engaging with thought leaders and uh, practitioners and influencers to boost their levels and then definitely continuous learning and professional development culture. Leadership has a role to play, a big role to play in fostering a culture of innovation and learning within the organization since they set the tone and vision, then they create psychological safety, then uh, they would empower and support the employees in all possible manners. They can lead by examples, thereby setting the tone for the organizations to adapt to the culture of uh, innovation and learning within organization, then creating structure and support systems for the employees. So, this was all about the role of leadership in fostering a culture full of innovation and learning within the organization. With this, I would like to summarize uh, the content which we discussed and uh, the topics that we took in today's session. So, broadly uh, in today's session, we tried to touch upon several emerging trends in the workplaces. We tried to explore with example, the VR, AR. AI and other emerging technologies specifically with reference to the training and development and also we discussed some of the strategies for staying ahead in the evolving field of training and development. With this I would like to thank you all, thank you.